Basset Hound, so he goes out there, and the next thing you know, he's squealing the first couple of times he yelps. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we keep uh, going back and forth about thinking about getting another dog. We have had two. Uh, one lived to be uh, 15. The other one lived to be a couple of days shy of uh, 18. Oh, uh, wow. The, uh, well, the, they tell me the smaller the dog, the longer they live. Well, this, the first one was um, a lab short dog mix. It looked like a black lab with no legs. And the other one was a, uh, a multicultural dog that weighed about 55 pounds. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait a minute, a black lab, that's a, that's a pretty big dog, isn't it? Dan's yep. about two yeah. and a half, three foot high at the shoulders. Yeah, oh yeah, about yeah, two feet, yep, it was about. It was a, it was it was like a black lab made it with a dachshund. <laughs> it was wow. it looked like a black lab. It had the same oh, coat, Lord. same tail, you know, same, but it was just <laughs> smaller. <laughs> oh wow, wow. Um, my uh, my son-in-law has a son-in-law. My uh, wife's grandson has a friend who has both a black raven and a black dog. And the dog, it's a beautiful and a very friendly dog, but <laughs> he, he calls the dog Umbra. You know, what an, <laughs> you know what an Umbra is, George? No. It's, it's the, David, you tell him what an Umbra is. <laughs> well, the only Umbra I can think of is a, a color. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Well, uh, the, this is the, uh, um, there's an umbra when there's a when there's an eclipse <clears throat> when the moon goes in front of the sun there is a pair of shadows and the shadow that's closest to the moon you know it it, it the light bends around that sphere and the resulting shadow is an umbra so wow. basically an umbra is a shadow and I think that's a that's a beautiful name. What what's really not to get too far off the track here, but um, I have a friend in California who used to live down the road, and she lives on a farm. And there's a couple of crows on her farm, uh, and she's starting to cultivate a relationship with the crows through food. Right, that's the way she cultivated a, a relationship with me. Right. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, she's got names for them. Anyway, she, she tells me, hey, well, I, I was poking fun. I went out and we have crows here and, and I went, call, call, and getting the birds to talk to me. And they go, okay, okay. So I write to her and I say, hey, what do I feed the crows? You know, how do I talk to them? And uh, she worms. There, there's a, hang on a second. There, there is a Facebook page for specifically for um, crows and ravens. Well, <laughs> my, my grandson's friend has a raven in the cage and he's teaching it to talk. And I'm going, where, where are ravens native? You know, I guess they're just, they're, they're like a big crow. And yeah. so um, I'm going, what are people, I go on the website, I joined that, that, that uh, Facebook page and uh, it's all artists, people who like to draw uh, crows and ravens or draw and paint them. It's like almost like a hobby or a business. I'm going, and I thought gardening was strange. <laughs> well, if you thought gardening was strange, then you should have been with me a uh, uh, day before yesterday when I went out and uh, tr uh, transplanted and pruned and everything. My what remains of my bonsai collection. I used to have about thirty, and I'm down to like eight now. 
Yeah, well, uh, I was, I was, uh, well, if you had seen the, the last video I posted, Roy talked about coming out and visiting you and your, and Janice in San Jose. And I said, well, did you see Dave's bonsai collection? And he just ignored me because I'm not sure he knew what I was talking about. So I would appreciate it if you would either uh, send me some of those pictures so that I can show the rest of the class what your hobby's like. I'm okay. sure you've got some great ancient bonsai. Only one, only one ancient one. Oh, okay. Other ones are middle-aged. <laughs> My... Mine never, mine never got past saplings. I gave it up. It was too much watering. <laughs> I have a, one pair of maples that has to be somewhere over 50 years old. Oh, wow. And uh, then the other ones are... Are they Japanese maple? No, they're they... just great, regular, ordinary day, you know, in your backyard maples. You probably had some around your house back in Maryland. And um, then I've got one pine tree that's probably about... I'm guessing maybe 30 and um, one really poor little uh, tree that I picked up out in the woods one time I but it's been sick because it hasn't thrived very well and it's probably about 15 years old and then everything else is just a couple years old now. <laughs> I could never get one to live over a year. Uh, I used to have about 30 of them, but I went on vacation one time and I had a sprinkler system that had worked for years. And uh, we were, it was the last three days before we came home, the temperature was over a hundred. And mm. at the beginning of that period, a rat came in apparently, <laughs> chewed the electrical wire on wow. four sprinkler heads. They, they chose the one that went to my bonsai plants and oh, chewed geez. that one. So they didn't get watered for four days, and uh, that's a death knell. I mean, I had one in another previous location that I watered before I went to work and inadvertently left it on the deck. And when I got home, uh, it was an azalea. It sounded like chimes, like wind chimes. It was. It, it sucked every bit of moisture out of it, and it was. It literally made a tinkling noise when the wind blew. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, no, the moral of the story of that is is that you have to leave food out for the rats, too, when you leave home. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> put your garbage out and don't put, don't let, let the can, let, leave the lid off the can. <laughs> yep. I had, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in another life, I was married to another human being, I think she was human, and, uh, we, we had a we had a garage and the rats or something got in there. We like had to trap them to get out. They went up and we had a refrigerator, second refrigerator, and you know it has those uh, drain pipes out the back for the uh, to manage the defrost. The rat got up there and chewed through the plastic just to get the moisture. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I had that problem was in spades on the system that watered the plants in the backyard. Uh, squirrels and rats both would, uh, they constantly are cutting. And I go out there one morning and find a geyser, you know, <laughs> coming up in, the, in front of the deck, you know. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, George, do you do any gardening? No, not anymore. I uh, have got... Uh... Well, when I was back in uh, elementary school and junior high, when living at home. Well, you grew up on a farm, it. didn't you? Yeah, a little small <laughs> farm. Yeah. My father I, called I, him I a said, if I farm. If I get out of this, I'll never do it again. <laughs> but that's uh, like. Uh, my stepdaughter kept giving her mother, you know, buying her plants periodically and giving them to her. She could never get any of them to live. Mm -hmm. I, I bought her a uh, orchid one time and uh, thought the damn thing died. You know, with, with the way she was doing it, I took it 
what was left of it and put it in the backyard and the damn thing sprung up again. I'm going, okay, this works. Yeah. Just let it go. <laughs> yeah. That, that was in Florida, wasn't it? Yeah, I was right here. Palm yeah, Arbor. They, the or orchids grow well here. Um, Tell you something else that grows here that, that seems kind of funny. What? Mistletoe. Mistletoe. Oh, yeah. Mistletoe. Right. Got in it in an oak tree in the backyard. Up in the trees, yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, I, best time, one of the best summers I ever had was I spent the summer out on a farm in Iowa that belonged to my <laughs> uncle. And uh, uh, that was a really great occasion. I mean, I got to stick my hand up the inside of a cow and help birth the little calf coming out. And oh, wow. Shot foxes uh, in the backyard. Or, How uh, old were you then? 10. Oh, wow. And, uh, your, your father was an avid gardener, wasn't he? And I, I remember uh, walking past your backyard. In fact, uh, you you may or may not remember, but your my dad used employed your dad to come down and when he decided to make the garden bigger uh, in the spring, he had him come down with a tractor and uh, the uh, tractor got stuck. And that was when we discovered we had an underground stream that ran through the middle <laughs> of the backyard. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Was, was it in a pipe or just flowing in gravel or what? In, the gra in gravel. We, oh, wow. What we did was we went and uh, uh, he and Mr. Stout, who lived across the street, went and bought two uh, or three of those great big cement, three foot diameter uh, cement rings. And they, they dug a hole and then they stuck the first one in and then they dug a hole and kept digging it out. And the second one, it finally kept settling down. And then finally, guess who had to go down and do the last digging? Cause I was the only one small enough to fit in there. <laughs> so I had to was go it, out. Was it a regular well ring? Yeah. Like a three footer? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we had it went down far enough that we always had a, uh, oh, never less than a foot. Oftentimes, two to three feet of uh, cold water down in there. Oh and wow! Tell you what, when you're down in that water, standing there trying to dig the gravel out from underneath the ring, so let us get down. You don't last too long. I mean, that was the coldest job I ever had in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I worked with my dad to sink a well in our right behind our house, and. Uh, he got down, I got a, I was his assistant and he went down a ladder. I pulled the ladder out. He had a, he had a tripod over top and a pulley at a steel bucket. And he was down, I don't know, maybe six to 10 feet digging. That's the only thing I hauled the bucket up and I wasn't paying attention. I dropped the bucket and right on his head. Oh, it was a big, heavy steel bucket, I think. I was glad it didn't knock him out. <laughs> I couldn't. I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have been able to get him out. <laughs> your 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 old man was a lot nicer than mine. He sent me down. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know this thing. Uh, living there on Temple Hills Road, um, and I don't know if you know about Alfred's Farm. Um, they had the. <clears throat> The old man lived down on uh, at the corner of Temple Hills and uh, Kirby Road. But uh, the son had the farm uh, absolutely across the street, across Temple Hills Road from his dad. Now, Silver Hill came in later and turned it into a uh, gravel pit. But not only did he have that, but he had a parcel of land off of Latham Lane, which was off of Allentown. And, and he used to raise uh, strawberries and stuff like that. But anyhow, um, when he sold his farm to Silver Hill, that part, he built a new house over on the uh, property over off of Latham Lane. And there is a swamp I call it a swamp, but what it was was a natural spring. And he opened up a uh, gardening uh, place where trees and plants and stuff like that. A nursery? And he just, he just, nursery. And he just set them on the edge of the swamp there. And um, that, that particular swamp drains all the way down Temple Hills Road and goes out uh, through 
down by Steed Road. There's a bridge down on Steed Road and goes on down to uh, the map. Uh, what is that? Uh, goes on down to through Livingston Road and on out, uh, comes out short of, uh, well, Piscataway Creek comes into it too down there, down further down, but it, it's really a long uh, haul. That yeah. and uh, yeah. there's a, a stream that comes off of uh, the Biggs's property that's on Kirby Road and it runs down down the side of the hill and on out back behind uh, uh, Shirley Paget where she used to live where, where mom and dad lived on Temple Hills Road. George George you're gonna have to come prepared with some some prepared graphics because you're talking about territory. Remember the last time we talked about Owsler's farm and we had to go on on, on the on the map and <laughs> map, yeah, map quest yeah before uh, but anyhow go ahead um so and now the the last time i was up there um parking planning had uh taken over the the property so i guess the the two girls sold you know the two girls that he he had uh, sold the property because I, I don't know what happened to him or his uh, wife. They were nice. Richard, um, yeah, go on. Go, go on. Go ahead, Dave. Richard, do you know where your that creek behind your house ended up? I mean, I wandered all through that woods over the years, and I don't ever recall remembering where it went when it went south. Well, must have gone by the Navy station there somewhere. I never, I never did follow it. Well, I thought it it drained into Piscataway Creek, but this is this is a good segue into the comment that I wanted to share with both of you, and and that is the the portion of Prince George's County that we were in, and I think it's a huge uh, territory. I think it. It covers several counties, uh, probably from the Chesapeake Bay all the way over to the Potomac River, was a glacial outwash plain. There was a series of, of them. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Chesapeake Bay was formed by glaciers and glacial outwash, but, but it's kind of weird because it was it was gouged out uh, during the warm period, rather than being like uh, Nantucket. You know, Nantucket uh, has a, a curve. It's a that's a terminal moraine. Anyway, the point is that the the gravel that you ran into in digging your sump was uh, created by uh, glaciation. There's all that gravel that's round stones and small rounded stuff. It's, it's round because it was washed out in the glacial melt. And it sort of, it's sort of like Florida is a, uh, a series of sinkholes. Salt. Well, no, that's what it's not. It's, it's, that's karst topography. Anyway, the, the point is that the Appalachians eroded down and and during the glacial periods, uh, the calcium carbonate was laid down, you know, from the the dead shells or the animals that left left their dead shells. So uh, so you know it's uh, it's all sloping down. That's why we got uh, uh, what do they call them? aquifers you know so it's it's sort of you know dave you know in the um and I, I know george probably hasn't seen this but the creek behind my parents home was like a almost like a v it was wooded and the springs the water was coming out at mid slope and it and it 
created the creek. The springs were feeding the creek. I have no idea where the spring water came from, except it was in that glacial uh, outwash layer. Probably that that would be about consistent. Those hillside springs would be about consistent where the water table was under our backyard. Water table is pretty high in that neighborhood. Yeah, because we had because you went up a little hill to get to the level where your parents was were, but then we went down the hill down to where the the river where the creek was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 But but remember that that uh, the outflow of the spring was like let's say if there was a thirty foot drop from the from the edge of the woods to the creek, 30, 50 max. Well, that means the, the springs were about halfway down, but anywhere from 12 to 25 feet below the crest of the ground. Be yeah, interesting to, to see what the, what the elevation of your dad's backyard was compared to the wood line on my dad's property. Yeah, we, anyway. you know, yeah, it would be kind of interesting because we, the one year and it may have been the year your dad's tractor sunk in there was we had a really really uh, wet winter and i remember mm. that the um in the basement of our house they had we had a basement and then we had a little cellar that was outside and the cellar outside the water came up to be about i don't know about not quite knee deep but it was fairly, wow. at least about a foot deep and that it uh, that actually put a couple of cracks in the our basement floor yeah, and, uh, and so that when it was when it kind of dried out after a while, my dad had to go in there, and I guess whatever the epoxy paints were that were available at that time, he had ended up basically putting a big thick layer that <laughs> covered the floors and you know halfway up the walls, to kind of like a like a oh, yeah. to keep it from we happening had, again. We had a lot of moisture in oh, our yeah. our ranch house because it was. It was dug into a hill. the the front The front door only had uh, three steps down, but the you know the ground sloped down, and you could walk into the basement level. Yeah. So, yeah. but we had a lot of problem. We had a French drain along the front, and bituminous stuff on the block wall and on the outside. And then we had to paint it heavy on the inside. I sort of vaguely remember what he looked like. <laughs> What's that? Somebody, a friend was visiting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he is. Well, luckily, the air is not too bad today, so the back door is staying open. But, oh, it's beautiful out. I had to move mulch and prune like David did and pruning roses and... Uh, I had a renegade uh, rosemary plant. <laughs> it was it was right next to a leaky faucet. We got a lot of growth. <laughs> oh, bad, yeah. yeah. And we had one of those back in San Jose. I at the, my faucet was right behind the plant and it uh, it was really it really did well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, today I was are... Go ahead, George. No, I was going to say, when we were talking about depths of wells, uh, I lived up on a hill, so when we when we had to, you want to see? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the uh, Tell your dog to get his own account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, he went to, uh, we, only, we went down 33 feet to get the, uh, to hit wow. water. It wasn't a lot, really. I mean, it was, so 11, 11, 11 rings or something like that, I think it was. Yeah. So it wasn't all that bad, but you know, once you, once you, do, once you dig it and got it done and you put the pump in there, then the next thing you know, you got to uh, clean the pump out again. Yeah. 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 Not, not many kids today know how to prime a pump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just pour water uh, in it. Or maybe not even if they have a fish tank, they don't have to prime the pump. <laughs> oh, I used to do that. 
They used to used to raise and sell guppies. Have have you ever have you ever raised um, coral? No. My that's, my. Uh, uh, yeah, that's salt water, and no, I don't. Yeah. You know, guppies that's are fresh cool. water, and you know. My uh, my wife's son, uh, had a had a tank that he and when he moved, he gave it to us. And he had a couple of, uh, uh, he had a, a fish, clownfish, and just, but Boy, mostly he had, he had coral. And I learned and photographed the life behavior of coral. Hmm. And well, it, was, salt, salt water it, it was, it was a lot of work because I bought a taller tank and it was hard to get water up into it. And you know you have to put in you have to change the water every two weeks and yeah. change I don't know fifty percent of it and got to be too much of a hassle but uh, yeah, it was well, a pretty cool experiment. A, I had a uh, twenty gallon low boy on a uh, wrought iron stand and it had I had two tanks down below it at the time because. You got to get the females out of there once the once they show up, or you know, daddy will eat them. We have never we had a couple of little small aquariums over time, but uh, we also I uh, in back in San Jose, I dug and put in a a, a pond. It was about a hundred gallon pond, and uh, I was surprised. I we would put goldfish in there, and yeah. uh, we ended up with a couple of goldfish that were I mean, about six inches long. How did and, they taste? Uh, I don't know. The raccoon got them before I did, and uh, we, but the interestingly enough, we had at least two or three crops of babies, and they they turn this kind of uh, kind of washed out brown when they're you know they don't they're not gold like a regular goldfish any longer when they yeah. uh, I don't it goes know what, back to being a carp. Yeah, go back to being a carp. Yeah, but uh, they were it was kind of but we. We had a couple of uh, koi that got to be pretty big, uh, and they were also served uh, up for dinner for uh, raccoons uh, or birds or, or birds. birds. You know, I actually had an egret stand. I went to the door one day, I looked out there, and went, "Holy crap! How did an egret find this pond that can't be any bigger than about four feet in diameter here in the middle of the neighborhood, uh, and standing in the middle of it?" And, uh, and of course it had eaten a couple of the goldfish. And so I went out there to chase it away. And I literally had almost had to kick it out of the pond. It, it went from there, it went up to the fence about 10 feet away. And then it, I chased it from there up onto my roof. And then I, it, I then it just, the little sucker wouldn't go away. And, but I'm still amazed to this day how that egress spotted this little tiny pond of water and thought, oh, there's gotta be some fish down in there. <laughs> I have a friend uh, who he didn't have children, so he had got these big projects. He had a huge, huge pond that went under his deck in the backyard. And I mean, he had a couple when he filled it in, he had to have a couple trucks, the you know, five ton trucks to bring enough dirt in. Anyway, he, he had some beautiful carp that were this big. So, sort of like a, a you know a public garden might have and he said he said you know he'd buy these fish and then the birds the great big birds would come and get them and he had netting and he had all kinds of stuff to prevent that but he, he finally got tired of feeding the birds yeah. you ever been to hershey park pennsylvania i'm sorry have you ever been to per hershey park pennsylvania no oh, yeah. I've been to Hershey, but not Hershey Park. Lost River, the uh, that the roller coaster goes over. Well, let's see, Moss River. Didn't there a Navy base near Moss River? No, no. not in the park, anyhow. Okay. Well, well, that's what they call it up in the park. Okay. Well, anyhow, that thing is full of large, very large carp. <laughs> And because people feeding them popcorn all the time. Oh wow! Yeah, they used to have a huge pond in San Jose, uh, a big koi thing, and man, they if you even look like you're going to put something in the water, they were jumped all over you. Uh, yeah. They, 
they because the koi were oh quite a few of them were well over two feet long and they were uh, well maintained uh, you know it's in their biological correct environment there George they, if you I'm sorry Dave I, I thought you were done uh, there's there's a uh, a place called Selby Gardens this is the wife of the one of the guys from Exxon uh, it's down in Sarasota Florida. and they it's a botanical garden and they have uh, a giant koi pond it's it's really a nice place to go down and you know have lunch and see the orchids and uh they have a big orchid house that sort of thing. there's a excuse me george um i'm gonna have to drop off now and uh i will uh will uh, send you a couple pictures if you want to post them uh the bonsai collection you can do that if you cool. want. um right. if 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 you have a mind to you can take your cell phone and just you know do a behind the behind the camera kind of you know tell something about them i can i can add that on to the video sure. yeah i can do that yeah all righty great all right, well, care guys i'll talk to you in a week or so all right, all right. Okay, We're, we've only got eight minutes left anyway so okay. all right well i gotta go anyway <laughs> thanks for coming bye bye okay, bye george bye, Dave. bye well it's just us again magic yeah just us again i uh I gotta take him out pretty soon. I usually I, take him out about four. I need to ask you, um, did you have a chance to see the video from last week? With no, I didn't. Okay. If you if you just if you bring it up, go down to the to the tail end of it. I think it had only it only lasted 40 minutes. Uh, but I I posted uh, or put in uh, the images of the Salisbury Cathedral Cathedral uh, model model yeah. yeah yeah I think I think you'll enjoy that it's pretty cool you know at that cathedral they have and I, I wanted to post this too maybe I can post it here uh, it's the oldest clock in the world hmm. uh, mechanical clock you know what the oldest currency in the world is Currency? Yeah. Sex. No. <laughs> no, but you're close. The British pound. Hmm. It's the lo the longest running currency in the world. Well, wasn't that interrupted by the uh, euro? Did they ever go on the euro system? No. Okay. Well, they, I guess they did when they were dealing with stuff on the continent but the pound is still the pound sterling is still the oh wow longest living well the british pound they didn't say sterling but the british yeah. pound is the but longest you... cur yeah the, i watch um uh, one of the but... modeling uh, uh websites i uh look at has a one of the things they have is did you know oh yeah i get i get one of those things did you know and uh was either yesterday or the day before about the british pound cool well i was a cartographer a map maker at one time in my career and the joke was it was the second oldest profession because when the guy went to the to the whorehouse, he had to draw a map for his friend. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, whatever. Let's close on that on that note, okay? <laughs> All right, Richard. I'll try to, uh, you know, because I because I enjoy talking to you. Thank you. Or, I enjoy or talking. Whoever to shows up. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to get the uh, the cheerleaders as a group to uh to join up not, oh, not what, was the, what was the guy's name i don't know i saw his picture i i posted it yeah but it seems to me he was a he, he had learned tumbling before he ever came to scratch yeah he was, a gymnast. Gymnast, he was a gymnast yeah 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 he was he was pretty cool but i never got to know him because he was only there a short time yeah
very short time. Well, check out check out your yearbook because uh, it's his pictures there, so he yeah. must be in there somewhere. Well, well, you know, Shirley and uh, short stuff. Um, Scott Wood. No, girl. Um, oh. Lawyer. She's a lawyer now. Um, can't was think of her Bobby? name. Huh? Bobby? Huh? Was her name Bobby? She was, no. She's, she's married to a judge, Bobby is. Um, I don't see his name on here. Oh, oh Pat. They have, they have, they ha show him doing, there are four shots of him doing, um, doing, yeah, uh, yeah. doing a summer, uh, I don't know, backflip or whatever. I've, I've been uh, having fun pulling stuff out of the yearbook. Go ahead. No, I just, uh, Bonnie, Bonnie and Javine. Yeah. Sure. Oh, I was calling her Bobby. I'm sorry. Yeah, Bonnie. Somebody calls her Bobby now. Yeah, Bonnie. She's a lawyer. Yeah, that's what I heard. She's a lawyer. Oh, oh, that's perfectly logical. Yeah, she married yeah. to a judge. Well, he was a lawyer before he was a judge. Had to be, I guess. I, um, I didn't get a chance to ask you what what you thought about that mess up in D.C. two weeks ago. Oh. Well, we've only got two minutes left. That's politics. And it, it didn't bother me as much as, as, um, as the causes of it. You know, yeah. that, that, I, I just, yeah. can't, I can't, I can't express my frustration, but you know that there's always an opposition there's undercurrent. Right. And that I think was ridiculous. it's good that it came out. I think it's good that it came out because people, I mean, the Capitol didn't get blown up or burned. No. Or well, you know, uh, I don't know if it was William Shakespeare or Adolf Hitler said. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I ended up getting a phone call. And uh, all right. Hey, Don. Uh, can I call you right back in about uh, two minutes? Thank you. Bye. I'm sorry, my my cell phone answers automatically. And yeah, well, like I was saying, I I don't know if it was uh, the Bard or Adolf Hitler said, if you tell some, if you tell people something long enough and loud enough, they'll believe you. All right. No. And that's what happened to I think. Well, and the and, and the political thing. atmosphere leads into it, but yeah, the the interesting thing is that there's at least two sides to every story. That's right. And so Republicans are not bad people. I have a couple of brother, as a matter of fact, one just called me. <laughs> you know, so yeah, well, I'm an independent dick, so I go, I go, however I feel. Hitter, huh? Okay. You know, I, I, can't, I can't vote in the primaries, but I can kill your ass when it comes down to the regular ones. <laughs> All right. Well, we've, we've hit the 40, 40 minute mark. Let's call it a day. It's a day. It's a day. Bye bye. All right, Dave. Talk to you soon. Okay. Or soon later or whatever. Bye bye. Bye. Bye to you guys out there. Look at it.